In case of a long standing scar and long standing burn wound, the periphery of the wound defect is occupied by healthy actively dividing skin cells. These healthy skin cells at the periphery of the wound undergoes rapid division to fill up the gap in the wound. Because of this, the cells become more susceptible to mutations as there is rapid cell divisions which is taking place. After a certain point of time, the amount of mutation increases. This leads to the development of cancerous changes in cells which are actively dividing. This process in turn leads to the formation of a cancerous lesion called as Marjolin's ulcer. Therefore, Marjolin's ulcer is a cancerous lesion which develops in long-standing scars and long-standing burn wounds. This is a Marjolin's ulcer arising from a post-burn scar. Marjolin's ulcers can arise from any chronic wound and unhealed scars. It is seen more commonly in males and it can affect all age groups. Usually between the inciting event and development of Marjolin's ulcer lies a period of latency. It is in this period of latency where mutations add up and ultimately leads to the formation of Marjolin's ulcer. Based on period of latency, Marjolin's ulcer can be divided into two groups, acute Marjolin's ulcer and chronic Marjolin's ulcer. Acute Marjolin's ulcer is the scar carcinoma which occurs within a year of inciting injury. Chronic Marjolin's ulcer takes more than one year. Morphologically, Marjolin's ulcer has two different appearances. First is a flat lesion which has an ulcerative appearance. It is also infiltrative in nature. These are usually poorly differentiated and carries a poor prognosis. The second variety shows exophytic papillary growth. This variety is well differentiated and have a better prognosis. The first variety which is a flat lesion and ulcero infiltrative in nature is a more common one. This is a clinical photograph of Marjolin's ulcer. This is an ulcerative variety one. Do appreciate the everted edges of the ulcer. Everted edges are characteristic of squamous cell carcinoma and squamous cell carcinoma is the most common histopathological type of Marjolin's ulcer. Clinically, Patients usually present with a history of full thickness burn or chronic scars. The ulcer is usually painless. However, it may bleed to touch. Sometimes, it is also associated with bad smell due to growth of bacteria on the surface of the ulcer. It can also present with enlarged lymph nodes draining the area where the ulcer is present. Marjolin's ulcer can affect any part of the body like upper extremity, lower extremity, scalp and even back. However, lower extremity is the most common area which is affected. Whenever a triad of ulceration, nodule formation and induration is present, it should prompt the surgeon for a biopsy. Biopsy is excision of tissue which is done from the edge of the ulcer. Once biopsy confirms our diagnosis of Marjolin's ulcer, we need to go ahead with imaging. This can either be a CT scan or an MRI scan. MRI is the ideal imaging modality for local infiltration. Using MRI, we can make out the involvement of soft tissue by the tumor 
as MRI has got excellent soft tissue resolution. Bony invasion and encasement of neurovascular bundle can also be made out. These informations will help us to plan the surgery of the patient. Regional lymphadenopathy should also be checked for in case the lymph nodes are involved by the tumor cells. For this, CT scan, MRI scan or high resolution ultrasound can be used. Metastatic spread is mostly limited to regional lymph nodes. However, distant metastasis can also be seen to organs like liver, lungs and brain. That's why sometimes metastatic workup becomes necessary. Metastatic workup includes abdominal ultrasound for liver and peritoneal involvement, CT chest for chest involvement and CT brain for brain involvement. Surgical excision is the preferred modality of treatment in case of margolin's ulcer. But we need to make sure to keep 2 to 4 cm clearance margin around the tumor horizontally. If lymph nodes are involved, then lymph node dissection needs to be performed along with surgical excision of the tumor. Sometimes radiotherapy may also become necessary. Indications of radiotherapy are inoperable lymph nodes, positive lymph nodes which have come up after lymph node dissection and tumor size greater than 10 cm even if there is no positive lymph nodes and a grade 3 lesion histopathologically. Chemotherapy is indicated in inoperable cases and cases in which the tumors have metastatized. Chemotherapeutic regimens are based on agents like 5-fluorouracil, methotrexate and cisplatin. Thank you for watching the video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Kindly subscribe my channel. It will help me a lot. Thank you.